Hola, mi nombre es la familia. Mi nombre es Amaro Dago. Son bienvenidos de nuevo a mi canal. And to my English subscribers, hello family members. My name is Amaro Dago and welcome back to my channel. If you're joining me for the very first time, I'm originally from Nigeria and I bring to you content based on how you can obtain your visas, immigration news and how you can live your best life right here in España. Disclaimer, I am not an immigration lawyer. Neither am I a recruiter. This video is brought to you based on my personal research and experience. So do well to do your research before you take that next step. In today's video, we are going to be talking about universities that you can apply to and the ones that you should never think of applying to as a foreigner or even as an indigent. So do not skip a bit because you may just be missing out the most important part. We'll be right back. Yes, it has come to my notice that several people really want to study internationally and they are considering Spain as an option. But the problem now is most of them don't do their due diligence to check out the schools they are applying to. They just feel if the school is in Spain, that means it's accredited by the Spanish government. And unfortunately, I would like to bring to your notice that this is not the case. There are several universities that are actually in Spain, but are not accredited by the Spanish government. Okay? So now, um, I would like to explain further because all the universities, public universities, semi-public universities, even the ones owned by the church, or all of them, are government you know owned and government accredited and if you check their certificate after you graduate the certificate that you are given it must be signed by Ray. Ray is the king of Spain and all the certificate must be signed by Ray. So if you went to a school that Ray did not sign your certificate, your certificate is not signed by Ray, you know that that um, certificate cannot be used to get a job in Spain. It's very important that you take note of all these things because it will affect you in the long run. If you come and study for four years, two years, one year as the case may be, and after you finish studying, giving your blood and sweat into your um, education, and you do not use that certificate to work, what is the need of studying? What is the need of wasting money, time, and resources? So that is why I decided to bring up this video you need to do your due diligence gone are the days when you just go on the internet check out a school and just believe that all is well and good no it's also good to pay attention to because a lot of foreigners want to come and study in english most of you guys fall into the trap of applying to schools that teach in english but these schools are not originally you know schools from france that came to spain because spain is part of the european union so they it's kind of an open door policy other businesses can come from their base and come and you know have um a branch in spain and it's fine it's accepted by the government but these schools are not accredited they are not accredited. If it's not accredited, you can't use it. When you finish, you will need to go and start all over again. So, a school that tells you that they, you can come into Spain using tourist visa, and when, when they come, they'll be able to help you change it into study visa, please. Do not mind that student advisor or whoever is telling you all those things because most of these schools are just looking for students. What they're after is how to get students. They've given them targets, get so so amount of students before this session resumes. And that's what they're after. So they'll tell you everything you want to hear. Please, for your own interest, do not come into Spain using tourist visa. Because the school and the consulate, they, not, they don't work hand in hand. That is not their job. The school is an independent body. The consulate is an independent body. 
they do not in any way meet or have any agreement on who they should bring into Spain, who is legit and who is not. This, any, no school has a right to write to the counselor telling them, oh, you're our student, what well, and what have you. This, they will not be influenced, counselors will not be influenced by any school because they know that school's business is to teach why their business is to check if you have what it takes, if what you are telling them, the story you're telling them in your visa application is the truth. So please watch out for schools. I'm calling out these red flags. These are red flags I'm calling out. So that once you hear it, you will know that Amara mentioned this and I'm not going to fall into this trap. Another thing you have to be very careful about in this new session we are about to enter 2025 is already fast approaching and schools have already started sending me emails telling me now they have resumed some of them not all of them okay that now they are commencing admission process so bear this in mind any school that you have checked on the internet they've told you this is where the school is situated it's situated in barcelona or madrid or valencia or Sevilla, wherever they are telling you the school is please do well to use do some research on your own to find out if that school is really in that location is the school there the address they gave you is it this is that that address if you check google map will you be able to see the school on google map check it out because i have somebody who applied to a school they said they are in a particular address i decided to do my own checks and i found out that the school is not there in fact somebody is living in the place that the school was meant to be i had to call the school to ask them some questions and they were telling me oh they change addresses that is giving red flag so please you who is applying who is paying your hard-earned money because money even if you have so much money you do not want to throw it away do you understand so you need to check if this school is in the address that they claim it is okay and if you need help with doing your um like doing your due diligence doing some research on this you can reach out to me but as i said you will be able to like reach out on my ig i leave my details on this video for you to reach out and just tell me the school you are planning to before you pay your one cent please do well to reach out not after you finish paying you now tell me oh i've made payments already but just help me check because they won't refund you important when you want to start to do your application please and please do well to be in constant communication with the student advisor or the representative of the school okay because when i say be in constant communication i don't mean just email and text um whatsapp messages do well to call and know if it's really a human being you're talking to because there are some cases whereby you are sending message and it's answered by I don't know it's not the, the person who is answering there's no human being in the other end answering the messages you know so it's very important that you call call at least even if it's two times three times you can call them to hear from them to ask questions that really matter Another thing you should ask, please, if I apply, if I pay my tuition and I don't get a visa, can I be refunded? Know what and what they can refund you, how much they can refund. Most schools here will say they would refund the bulk of the money, but administrative fee will not be refunded, which is fine. But the situation whereby a school is saying that, oh, when, when you pay, they are not... Um, they will not refund you or they, they they can't help you with the situation just try and get your visa c or c stuff like that know if you want to go ahead to apply for that visa using that school and if you would like to desist 
Can you afford to lose the money if you don't get the visa? Are you 100% sure that the visa, you're going to get the visa? These are some pertinent questions that you need to ask yourself. When you come to a conclusion that, okay, I don't mind losing the money, uh, I would apply, or whatever conclusion you come to, that's your own cup of coffee. But make sure you know you have, you've placed your cards on the table and you know what step you want to take. It's very important to apply on time in Spain okay applying late it's not good for you who is the applicant and in several cases it will end up backfiring like you may not be able to get the visa your school may be decide that you're too late to resume and you have to defer the admission so things like that can happen but if you want to apply in 2025, two ought to start on time so that um, when, it's, when it's late and your, your student advisor from one school is telling you, oh, don't worry, just continue your application, the Spanish government, um, the consular will give issue you visa, have it at the back of your head that the school and the consulate, they, don't, they are not working together. Everybody is an independent body and they do their things separately. So it's not everything they tell you in school that you're going to take verbatim. Because those ones, they are looking for... They need students to fill in spaces. And if you're applying to a private school, you know private schools, um, they're not funded by the government. If you're applying to public school, nobody even cares about tell you to pay instrumentally your tuition though it's easier to apply to government schools but the thing is that it's highly competitive so you might apply and 1 million people applied at the same time so it there is a little difficulty in getting the admission because of how competitive it is but at least you're certain that you're applying to a good school and that your money is not going to be a waste. Whatever happens, you will be refunded. I don't know if I'm, I'm making sense. So these are some of the red flags I'm calling out today. Even if it's not even university education you're coming for. If you are coming to play football internationally, you need to check all, not everything that call themselves football academy are really football academies. Not every every um, thing you see on the internet, it's real. They are it, uh, on ground. I'm in Spain. <laughs> so on ground, there are some football academies that are on the internet that is not on ground. It's not on ground in Spain. So whatever it is you're coming for, do your due diligence. Do not be too trusting. Or believing whatever somebody says on the internet you're chatting with them through whatsapp so you believe that oh they are the real deal they can eat your money and nothing will happen so i don't want anybody to come and cry about how they applied and something happened along the way that is why i'm making this video all right this is where I draw the curtain for today. Thank you very much for joining me on today's video. Remember, I work with an authorized Spanish translator. And before you come into Spain, you know you need to translate your documents from English to Spanish. So do well to use my details and send in your requests. In 48 hours, definitely your translator documents will be ready. I hope this video was able to help one person or a whole village to make better decisions come 2025 session. Alright, see you on my next video. Till then, hasta luego.